the physical separation of the cytoplasm, it happens in the cytokinesis. In animal cells, it begins after mount anaphase and the contractile ring. This ring is made up of uh, membrane forms or uh, made up of uh, actin filament forms. And this at the, is at, located at the, uh, locate, the same location as the metaplate. And actin filaments pulls the uh, pulls the plasma membrane inward. This is what pinches off the daughter cells. And this creates the fissure and the cleavage for her. And that continues until the plasma and the mem membranes merge and two cells are separated. In plant cells, cytokinesis is slightly different. In plant cells, rigid cell wall uh, prevents the cleavage furrow from forming. So the Golgi vesicles with proteins and glucose producing an interface move along the metaplate and then vesicles fuse to form the cell plate, which then enlarges and then merges at the periphery. This is here are the Golgi vesicles lining up at the metaplate and its cell plate is now thickening and then eventually Golgi membrane becomes the cell membrane and plant cell separates. So let's talk about more talk more about uh, G naught phase. So not all cells go from interphase to mitosis continually. Intes intestinal cells do, uh, liver cells do, but post mitotic cells like muscle cells, brain cells, they go into quiescent stage or G naught. And some are some cells are in G naught temporarily. What cells only need to divide if they uh, if they need to? Your skin cells. If you get cut, your skin cells are constantly uh, dividing. Uh, but sometimes the growth pattern needs to change because if you get a cut, you get you have to have higher gro growth uh, rate. Otherwise, the wound is not going to heal. Some cells are in gene permanently. Those are the post-mitotic cells, muscle and nerve cells. So why enter G0 from G1, but not G2? What is the ploidy in G2 stage? G2 stage, uh, G2 comes after the synthesis stage. So this is 4N, this is tetraploid. So cells cannot function in, a diploid cells cannot function in a tetraploid environment. So this cell cycle needs to be controlled very uh, carefully. So how do you control the cell, cell cycle? The frequency of cell turn turnover ranges anywhere from few hours in early embryos, one to two to four to eight cells and so on and so forth, and to an average of two to five days for epithelial cells, like intestinal cells. And for gene uh, lifetime would be uh, in G0 by cells that are in uh, brain, muscle neurons, and muscle cells, or post-mitotic cells. So time spent in each phase of the cell cycle also varies. Um, 24 hours for fast dividing cells in culture. Uh, for cells like that, G1 phase lasts about 11 hours. And the timing of cell cycle is also controlled by internal and external factors. Nutrients, signal transduction, hormones, all those are used to control the timing. So regulation of cell cycle usually occurs at the internal checkpoints, as we call it. And daughter cells are exact duplicate of the parents. Any mistakes in duplication or distribution of the chromosomes will be passed on to the new cells. So it is very important to regulate how this process works. And the checkpoints stops, uh, the mistakes at cell cycle at the end of G1 stage, G, G2 to M transition, and during the metaphase. So this is the G1 checkpoint, restriction point. Here's the G2 checkpoint, and here's the M metaphase 
checkpoint. So let's talk about the first checkpoint, G1 checkpoint. This determines if all conditions are favorable for DNA replication. Now, it's also known as the restriction point, and this is the point where cell division becomes irreversible. If you pass the G2, G1 checkpoint, then you go through the synthesis. And then if you go through the synthesis, you have to go through the uh, mitosis. And this checks for adequate reserves and cell size. And it also checks for the damages to the DNA at G G1 checkpoint. And cells that do not meet this requirement will not be released into the synthesis phase. So what, what does G2 checkpoint do? G2, uh, remember, is uh, cell is currently at 4N or tetraploid. G2 checkpoint bars the entry into the mitosis. Cell size, protein res reserves are checked. But most important part of G2 checkpoint is making sure that all chromosomes have been replicated and the replicated DNA is not damaged. Then what does the M checkpoint uh, do? Metaphase, metaphase checkpoint. This occurs at the end of metaphase stage. And this is also called the spindle checkpoint. And this check this has to check if all sister chromatids are correctly attached to the spindle microtubules. And that makes sense because if it's not, that means mitosis will not separate the sister chromatids. Sister chromatid separation is irreversible. So each pair must be anchored and they must be separated. What happens if this fails? Have you heard, have you heard of non-disjunction? Trisomy 21, Down syndrome? That's a, a condition that arises from failure of separating chromosomes. And uh, other failure in regulation can cause diseases and commonly, most common uh, cause for cancer is uncontrolled cell division. And uh, what happens is that mutation causes some faulty protein that participates in that regulation of cell product, cell reproduction. Even sometimes even very minor mutation can allow subsequent mutation to occur more readily. It depends on which protein which function is being disrupted. Uncorrected errors, mutations, are passed on to, passed on and accumulate in each generation of cells, and which causes more non-functional protein to appear. And eventually, the growth rate of cells with, with mutations increase beyond the normal cells, or you have cancer. So <clears throat> what is a proto-oncogene? Uh, uh, the genes that code for positive cell regulators are the proto-oncogenes. Once if these are mutated to gain a function, then become mm -hmm. then they become the oncogenes or cause cell to become cancerous. So the proto-oncogene is the positive regulator of cell cycle that it must have gain of function mutation to become an oncogene. So if mutation allows a CDK or cell cyclone-dependent kinase involved in cell cycle regulation to fail at one of the checkpoints, then the mutated cell moves on to cell division. So any gene that regulates the cell cycle can be mutated to override the checkpoints. And then that gene becomes the proto-oncogene. And uh, most proto-oncogenes are discovered in cancers. And once this proto-oncogene is mutated, then it becomes, becomes the oncogene. Positive regulators of cell cycle is, more, is mutated be, to become more active. This is what gain of function mutation is. Then there are the tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes are the opposite of proto-oncogenes, and these are the negative regulator of cell cycle. And these prevent uncontrolled cell division. Uh, RB1, P53, P21, 
they all block the progression of cell cycle. And RB1 does this by uh, blocking G1 uh, progression. What is blocked? DNA synthesis is being blocked. P53 blocks mutation itself. It's a master regulator. It recruits DNA repair machinery and it turns on P21. And the P21 also blocks G1 to S progression. So here's a normal P53. It prevents DNA damage, cell cycle anomalies by turning on RB1 and P21 and hypoxia. And P20, P53 causes cell cycle arrest. It, if it has DNA damage, then it brings in the DNA repair machinery and then cell, cy cell cycle can restart. Or if it cannot be repaired, then it programs the apoptosis to occur. So P53 is, can cause apoptosis or it programs cell death. So what happens then if you mutate this master regulator P53? Mutated P53 appears in more than half of all human tumors because it has multiple roles. It turns on the cell cycle inhibitors, or P21. It turns on DNA repair. It turns on apoptosis. So mutated P53 cannot fulfill any of those roles. So cell cycle just continues. And then cell becomes cancerous. Let's uh, go over cell cycle or prokaryotic, prokaryotic prokaryotic cell division and we'll end it we'll end there so prokaryotes pro propagate by process called binary fusion for unicellular organisms cell division is the only method to reproduce produce uh, new individuals as in eukaryotes daughter cells are ident identical to parent cells they also must divide the RNA DNA and cytoplasm uh, equally few essential steps. Genomes must be replicated, then allocated into daughter cells. Cytoplasm uh, must have machinery to sustain life in new cells. That's why it is important to divide the cytoplasm equally between the daughter cells. In bacterial cells, the genome is a singular, single circular molecule. There's no need for mitosis, just replication and division. And binary fission continue. So here's the origin of the replication for the circular DNA shown here. And this is the nascent uh, DNA synthesis. It just is, and these are FITZ or FITZ uh, proteins. Then after DNA replicates, cells begin to elongate and the physical proteins migrate towards the midpoint of the cell. And then duplicated chromosomes separate and these fizzy uh, ring forms around the midpoint of the chromosome, or midpoint of the cell, causing a, uh, causing a cleavage furrow. Then uh, physical proteins direct the formation of the septum which is what actually separates these two daughter cells. When septum, septum is completed, cell pinches off in two, and that causes birth of two daughter cells. Okay, you know what? That's, um, that's all I want to do for today. <laughs>